Hello and welcome to Marcella's Purse. I am Marcella and today I will show you how to make this origami bag. It is a fun project. It is called origami bag because it's based on folding the fabric to create the shape. It is um, a very nice size to use as beach bag perhaps and doesn't have required in a, any interfacing or stabilizers and it doesn't have any magnets or buttons however you can adapt it as, as you wish it's a very fun thing to do I, I had heard about origami bags and I watched several tutorials in Japanese mind you I do not speak Japanese I watched one in English and one in Spanish so from all of them I came across with this uh, finally made this origami bag and I hope you enjoy it. It's really simple to make and it's a very fun project for beginners. So keep watching. These are my two fabrics. I want this for the outside and this one for my lining. And very simply what you need you can think is as follows you need a rectangle a wide a wide waist <laughs> so the widest part has to be three times as wide as long as the side um, measurement so it is in my case 54 inches by 18 inches which is roughly 138 centimeters by 46 centimeters because if you see my drawing we're going to fold the fabric and we need to have three squares right does it make sense so you need a rectangle and the length has to be three times as long as um, the width or the drop of the fabric now in, I, I will put my dimensions in the comments uh, below and what I did because I wanted to get ahead um, I put the two fabrics right sides together and I sew them along all the sides all the sides but I left an opening there just about the middle part on what will be the top of the bag to turn it inside out and this is what I did I turned it inside out and I have my right um, sides out of the bag now of the material now I'm going to remove this pin so I don't hurt myself I also iron the fabric so it's nice and tidy and what we have to do is to oh, let me put it this way is to fold the fabric in three so if we move my my table should be longer actually you can use your measuring tape of course so we fold like so towards the middle or the third and then the other way and here's my miniature again to explain the folds now uh, we have to end up with three squares so I'm taking one of the corners here that one and I'm bringing it over like so and I will put a pin here and then if I fold over just where I put the pin I will have one square shape and then if I lift the fabric like so and I fold it there we have the three squares now what you have to do now is go to the ironing uh, board and iron all the folds here because you will need them as a guidance in a moment okay I fold it nice and tidy so I have three uh, two folds creating three sides there okay now I am going to put a pin if, if I move this forward on this side here you see 
see this corner? I am going to put a pin just in the middle of that fold. You see? Just to guide me. And another pin on the top here. On the same spot. Right? So a pin on the fold and a pin at the bottom. So I am going to open this now. And I'm going to take the, the two corners that I had earlier and I'm folding, making it come to the middle point where I put the pins that were marking the fold. So if I show you my paper, what I did was to fold this side, making it match this line here, okay? So I'm going to pin it in place there. I really need a, a camera on the ceiling here so I can show you from above a bit better. So I'm just pinning there and we are going to go to the sewing machine. Pin along here and we will sew from where we put the mark with the pin, here to there. Okay? Now, be careful, to, don't, don't, uh, don't twist the, the fabric. You have to keep this is very geometric. So, from here to there, and I'll be back. I did the stitching, and don't forget to start the stitching and reversing, securing the first stitches and secure the stitches here at the end, right? Right, so what I will do now is to fold the top corner, this one, like this, out of the way, and the other third of the rectangle, I am going to fold, making it come to this end here, okay? This corner, will come there. And if you can see, I still have the pin that I put earlier indicating um, the, the line of the first fold, when we first folded the fabric. And I pull the fabric down a bit. You see, this is my, my uh, angle there from by the fold I just did. Bringing this corner there, and we're going to pin. We're going to pin from there to there. And this time we will sew from this point to that point. This is the second stitching I did. But the gap was here, so I sewed it closed. I, I sewed it closed as I was sewing along this edge. So it's now a closed gap. Now we're going to turn this inside out. We're going to find our pretty fabric. And can you see the the triangular shapes is taken? Now, if you look at it, uh, there will always be um, a difference like this side here, this edge. The same will be on the other side because of the stitching we have done, the seams we did. Um, but do not worry because that will not be noticeable uh, when, when you're using the bag, when we finish it off. As you see, it turned out to be quite a nice uh, size bag. Now, we have the corners here, and I like to always make my bottoms there square, because that gives more room inside the bag. At this point, this is completely optional, but this is what I'm going to do. So, I shall, uh, I shall iron this, the fold here and here, 
and on this corner as well because we're going to uh, do the stitching on the outside using a French seam uh, technique. So I will iron here and here and I'll be back. Corners ironed then and I shall, I shall open the the fabric. The reason I, I iron it is because I wanted to go nice and and steady making sure that I don't twist the fabric. So I don't know if you can see but I have a fold here where I press with the iron and the other one is on the other side there and I'm resting the back so with my fingers I'm feeling to match both pins there so I know that I am well aligned. So I'm putting it there I can now move the finger to a different look and the finger no <laughs> the pin to a different location different position and I'm taking a ruler and I think that if I measure from this point alongside here about two and a half inches which is um, is it uh, let me see, about six and a half centimeters I'm doing a mark there so put the pin as well because with the pattern I might get confused and here I can see that one and I am putting the ruler across and I'm matching that mark with the one there where the pin is and I will draw a line and I am going to go to the sewing machine and I will stitch on top of that line there and I will do the same on the other corner there are the, the stitches that I did so I am going to cut quite close to the stitching very close indeed as much as I can and um, I will do the same on the other corner quite close to the stitching there and now I am going to put this inside out I have one there if I put my fingers inside I am going to pin just to, just to keep it in position there along along the stitching that I did and I will do the same in both corners and I shall lay this flat and I am going to stitch and feeling with my fingers I will be sewing well close uh, very close to the um, edge of the fabric um, of the stitching we did before so if I let me take this pin off so this is, is going to happen we will stitch along here but when we turn the fabric inside out you will see that we will be encasing the stitching can you see we will be doing this that's initial sewing with it when we sew it from the inside we will be closing it and it will be hidden from the outside is that all right so we will close as close to the edge as we can making sure that we're trapping that raw edge inside and I'll show you what it looks like there is the stitching and if I hold my hand there and I turn it inside out you will see that the stitching on the outside is completely blind and perfect and we have a box bottom there there you see much neater finish that way now these are our 
handles or the straps and there are several ways you can finish this off I was thinking about it and I found these plastic rings oh before we do that before we do that we have to do a top stitching close to the edge along all the sides for neatness because I'm not having it without uh, stitching on the edges so we're going to go and do a very uh, need the stitching, top stitching along all the edges of the opening there and I'll come back to you now here's my pretty stitching okay um, I was talking about the plastic handles there um, ju just as an idea for you uh, always consider whatever handles you're using uh, consider the weight you will be carrying in my imagination this was going to look really pretty putting it like this and making it go that way towards the inside and just stitch in place so if I put the pin we will have this as a handle and I think it will look it will look nice but um, filling the handle is feels very flimsy for what I want to use it for so that would be a no-no but you might have a, a different a stronger handle that you might want to use now the very basic option is to overlap both ends like so and then a stitch, perhaps in a triangular shape, join them together and then attach a pretty button on top. And this is your simple handle. Mm? That's, the, that's the basic. Now uh, what I am going to be doing, another option, I shall show you if I am pin the handles. I have here some pieces of material that I found. Depending on the length you can you know pin the bag in place and um, the handles and, and test how you feel comfortable. I made here a tube. It's a, it was a rectangle. I shall write down the dimensions in the comments. Um, a rectangle of fabric is a faux suede material that I have left over. I have another piece here. I folded the edges, these narrow short edges and and stitch it on both sides and then I fold it like so and stitch along and then just simply turn it inside out. So I thought one option could be to insert one end there, oh, this is stiff, and insert the other end there, and this will give me making sure that it's nice and neat and stitching everything in place, and this will give me a longer strap if that's what you want. I'll show you uh, what most people do with this. I will make this tube like I did this one and I'll come back to you and explain. Here's my tube and um, the rectangle I used to make this little tube uh, measured 6 by 5 inches which is 15 by 13 centimeters. So here's my little tube and what you would traditionally do is to put this one of the the ends of the handles the handle through there making it come on the other side slide it as much as you need and then uh, sew the two ends together so that's what I am going to do I'm going to center it while in place 
and I'm going to do a triangular shape stitching, I think, and I'll show you what it looks like. They're joined together, and I, if I slide this back, the joint will be um, hidden. Now, um, I give you the dimensions, but as you see, mine is quite loose, perhaps because my fabric is a bit thinner than I thought it. I wasn't sure how it's going to turn up. So I think I'm going to undo this and make this, this part, a bit narrower. So I would suggest you then, according to the thickness of your material, um, perhaps you need a, a narrower rectangle for this. But uh, either way, I will do a couple of a stitching, a blind stitching here on the edges, because I don't want this to slide in, in and out anyway. So here's, here's our origami bag. I hope you have enjoyed it. I really enjoyed this. It's so simple and um, not really to elaborate. It's just the basic folding materials. And I hope you have enjoyed it. And um, don't forget to subscribe. To subscribe, I, I really look forward to your comments as well. And see you soon. Bye.